Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat in which we would look at the normal distribution for a portfolio and the concept of value at risk. This concept is usually not explained when in college, so hopefully I will do a good job explaining value at risk because I believe once you understand normal distribution, you should be able to easily understand value of risk, and that's why I bunched those two topics together. These topics are covered on the CPA as well as the CFA exam. Also, in an essentials of investments or, or, or uh, principles of investments, whether undergraduate or graduate, as always, I'm going to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn. If you haven't done so, YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,700 plus accounting, auditing, tax, finance, as well as Excel tutorial. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, put them in playlist. If they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people. Connect with me on Instagram. On my website, farhatlectures.com, you will find additional resources to complement and supplement this course as well as your other accounting and finance courses. I strongly su suggest you check out my website. In the prior session, we looked at the scenario where we had four scenarios, basically a scenario analysis, the probability for each scenario, the holding period return, the expected return of the portfolio, the deviation or the range from the expected return, we computed the variance and, and from the variance, we square root the variance to come up with the standard deviation. So the focus on this session is about standard deviation and how the standard deviation fits in a normal distribution. So let's go ahead and make sure we understand what is a, what is a standard deviation. A standard deviation is the amount of volatility, risk, uncertainty, fluctuation in your portfolio. So somehow we want to measure how risky is your portfolio. How is it measured? It's measured through the spread of the numbers. How spread are the returns or how spread are they? And it's represented by the letter, by the, uh, by the letter Greek sigma looks something like this. And what, what does, what does the standard deviation tells us? Generally speaking, if we have a large standard deviation suggests that the data is more dispersed, more volatile, more risky. Okay, so the average is less representative. If the standard deviation is smaller, if we have a small standard deviation, suggests that the data is less dispersed, less volatile, and the average will say it's generally more representative. Now we're gonna look at we're gonna look at the standard deviation in a normal distribution graph, but just wanna let you know these are the rules kind of to keep in mind. Now we're gonna be working with a normal distribution. Uh, we're going to assume it's a normal distribution, and if what is a normal distribution? It's the bell a bell curve shape, which we're going to see in a moment. We're going to assume we're working with this. What does the normal distribution tells us in co in conjunction with the standard deviation? Well, what we say is this: a lot of the data, so 68% of your data of your return falls within one standard deviation. I'm going to show you real quick what does that mean, and we're going to look at another graph. So if this is the mean. And this is one standard deviation. This is plus one, minus plus one, minus one standard deviation. The majority of the return, approximately 68% of the return, falls within plus and minus one standard deviation. Most of the data falls between two standard deviations. So if we go to minus two, plus two, I'm going to change colors here. And now, 95% of the expected return falls within two standard deviation because now we, we are increasing the standard deviation and almost all the data, 99% of the data falls within, let me change the colors again, three minus three plus three standard deviation. Basically, you know, once we increase the standard deviation, it's, it's gonna encompass everything. It's gonna, this orange will, approximately include 99% of the returns within three standard deviation. Now, why it's not 100%? Because you could always have something outside the normal, which is called the black swan. But within stand three standard deviation, all the returns should fall within three standard deviation. The majority of it should fall within one standard deviation. 68% of it should fall within one standard deviation. Let's take a look at this actual example to see exactly how it works. Here we are working with a normal distribution, um, normal distribution bell curve. The expected return is 10% and the standard deviation is 20. Let's now use numbers and explain what I just told you a second ago. Well, 
if it's 10 within one standard plus one standard deviation minus one standard deviation it means it's going to be we're going to so it's 10 plus 20 we're going to be at 30 so notice 30 percent and 10 minus 20 it's going to give us minus 10 percent minus 10 percent so within one standard deviation notice we have approximately 68 percent of the return so 68 percent of the return it's going to fall within one standard deviation now what happened if we go to two standard deviation negative two plus two negative two and plus two the standard deviation is 20 20 times two is plus 40 percent minus 40 percent now if we go plus 40 percent so if we have 10 percent the mean plus 40 that's going to give us 50 percent we're gonna, whoops we're going to be at 50 percent and 10 percent plus minus 40 it's going to give us at 30 percent so here we are dealing with here so plus plus two standard deviation plus two standard deviation minus two standard deviation within those two standard deviation we're going to have 95.44 let's just say 95 percent of the return and within three standard deviation within three standard deviation what what's three standard deviation here here the standard deviation is quite large three times 20 is 60 percent so 10 plus 60 we are at 70 percent within three standard deviation we could have a return of 70 percent okay but that's going to encompass 99 percent of the return and minus what's going to give us 10 minus 60 it's going to give us negative 50 negative 50 it's going to encompass this so within three standard deviation basically we're going to have all the possible returns so this is what we are saying another way to look at this let me show you another picture of of this i'm going to show it to you in another format another pictorial hopefully it will make more sense because it's very important that you understand what are we doing here here's what we're saying what we are saying is this we have a portfolio and the mean is the expected return of this portfolio is 10%. The, uh, uh, the standard deviation is 20. So the standard deviation equal to 20. It means within one standard deviation, we could have a return of 30% and we could have a return of negative 10. But the majority of the return, if it's, it's fall within this one standard deviation. If we go to standard deviation, well, we're going to add, now we're going to add 40%. So we're going to be at 50% and minus 30. Now we're going to have less here because the majority, it's going to be here, 68. Now you might be saying, hold on, isn't 95 more than 68? Yes, but the 95 is accumulative with the 68. So really the difference between 68, 95 and 68 is what's in the second degree standard deviation. Then the third degree standard deviation it's 60 as we said it's uh, it's going to be 70 percent and uh, uh minus 50 minus 50 yes minus 50 minus 50 let's have minus 50 here minus 50. so within three standard deviation the majority of return will fall here and this is 99 percent again the majority falls the 68 percent you might be saying but isn't 95 greater it's 95 minus 68 isn't 90, 99 greater than 95 it's only an additional four percent here if we're talking about the cumulative probability so this is what we are saying here so now let's take a look and kind of think out loud what do we mean by a far, far outcome from the mean for example a return of 15 percent below the mean would hardly be noteworthy if the typical volatility were high so would we say a, re a return less a return less than 15 percent of the mean would that be an issue in our example and the answer is no a return of less than 15 percent would still fall would still fall would still fall within this group so if we have uh, my, 10 minus 15 is minus 5 okay minus five is right here so we are still within one standard deviation so we would say a portfolio like this uh, if we are 15 percent below the mean that's not a big deal but the same outcome would be highly unusual as the step if the standard deviation is five let's see let's change this example and assume the standard deviation is five let's assume we have a portfolio now we're going to be working with the standard deviation of five so here we go it's a 10 percent expected return 
and the standard deviation equal to 5%. Now, what, 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 what would things look like now? Now, plus 5 is 15, minus 5 is 5. This is within one standard deviation. Everything should fall within 66% of the expected return should fall within one standard deviation. If we go two standard deviation, we're going to add 5. It's going to be 20, 20% 20 and 0 because, you know, 5 minus 5 is 0. This is within two standard deviation, two standard deviation. And within three standard deviation, three standard deviation, we're going to be at 25% and negative 5, negative 5%. Now, now in this in this scenario, if we say if we say we are 15% below the mean, well, in this scenario, 15% below the mean, we are 10 15 percent below the mean what at three standard deviation so this is an un, it should be an unusual unusual outcome because we are three standard deviation from the mean so what does that mean although both portfolio have the same expected return the difference between them is this one is less risky we should not see we should not see a negative 15 percent it, it doesn't mean we will not see it but for that to happen based on the portfolio volatility it's un likely it's unlikely outcome here it's normal if we deviate 15 percent from the mean we are still within one standard deviation in this portfolio if the standard deviation is five and we deviate 15 percent from the mean either positive or negative within we are within three standard deviation so it's very important that we understand this concept that the standard deviation measures the volatility the risk and it tells us how risky Basically, can you stomach this risk? That's the question. Would you prefer a portfolio with a standard deviation of 15% or would you prefer, uh, of, sorry, of 20% or would you like a standard deviation of 5%? Okay, now, uh, you know, if you want more risk, you will take this portfolio. Why? Because this portfolio, you may hit 50%, you may hit 70% return, but you also you may hit negative 30 and negative 50. In this portfolio, based on the standard deviation, the maximum you will get is 25%, and the worst it's going to get is negative 5. So it's up to you. More risk, more return. That's basically the concept. And how do we measure this? Standard deviation. I just showed you when, when we compute the standard deviation. Now we're going to look at... Um, at how we can compute the standard deviation giving a normal distribution. So it's, it's very important to kind of just be comfortable with the math. We can transform any normally distributed return into a standard deviation score by first subtracting the mean return, okay, then dividing it by the standard deviation. Basically, what, what are we saying? We're looking at this. We're going to take the return minus the expected return divided by the standard deviation, it's going to give us the standard deviation score. So let's take a look at an example to see how this works. So we want to find, let's assume we want to find what is the standard deviation if we are dealing with um, posit one, uh, let's assume 30%. If we are dealing with a 30% return, if we are dealing with a 30% return, 30% minus the expected return is 10 percent minus the expected return and that's the range in the numerator divided by the standard deviation 0.2 so 0.2 divided by 0.2 equal to 1. so notice at 30 percent we have a standard deviation of 1. now we don't have to stick with this we can try 33 percent we can try 25 percent and do the same thing to find out where do we stand for the for the standard deviation or we can try a minus 5% to find out what's the standard deviation for minus 5%. Okay, so make sure you are comfortable with this formula. Once we have the return, once we have the expected return, once we have the standard deviation, we can find the standard deviation for that return specifically. Conversely, we can kind of um, rearrange the formula and find given the given the standard deviation we can find the return so let's let's do this kind of just make sure we are comfortable with this we're using the same example here what we do we'll take the expected return of the portfolio the expected return of the portfolio is a 10 percent point one zero plus uh the the uh 10 percent and we're, we're gonna we're gonna use in the same example we're gonna use 30 percent so the standard deviation of 30% is one standard deviation times the standard deviation of the portfolio 0.2. So if we do this computation, uh, 
um, one times 0 0.2 plus uh, 0 0.1, that's gonna get which is 0.2 times plus 0 0.1, which is 0 0.3. Three, so we can find thirty percent. So basically, make sure you are comfortable if you want to if you want to compute the percent, giving a standard deviation expected return, or if you want to compute the standard deviation, giving the expected return and a particular return for the portfolio. So it's just want to make sure you're comfortable with those formulas. Now, what happened when the when the investor is a little bit concerned with risk because the standard deviation measured the dispersion of possible asset return. That's true. But sometimes you want to know what's the worst case scenario, like what could happen if we really have a worst case scenario. So suppose you are worried more specifically about large investment losses in a worst case scenario for your portfolio. So basically the investor might ask, how much would I lose in a fairly extreme outcome? Okay. For example, in a five percentile of the distribution, uh, you know, basically, you know, there's a five percent chance that something bad could happen. There's always that, that chance. What is my possible losses at 5%? So simply put, what you are saying is, you want to know there's the 5% is a possibility. 5% something could happen. If that 5% happen, what would be, what do I expect my investment to experience? What would be my return? So in the investment language, this cutoff is called value at risk, donated by V, small a, and capital R to distinguish it from the variance. So it's a V, A, R, value at risk value at risk. So a loss averse investor must might desire to limit portfolio value at risk that is limit the loss corresponding to a particular threshold probability such as 5%. So you want to know at five, what, what's the possibility of 5% that happening, that worst, worst case scenario happening? What, what, how much could I lose? You could also do it at 1%. You could do it at 5 or at 1. So let's take a look at value at risk. So this, this value at risk compute the fifth percentile of a normal distribution with a mean of zero, mean of zero, it means we have the mean and a variance of one. So under those circumstances, we're, we're looking at standard deviation at negative because it's going to be a loss, negative 1.64485. So simply put, what is our return? Basically, what is our return at this standard deviation? Remember, it's negative 1.64. 4485. In other words, that is 1.64485 standard deviation below the mean would be the fifth per percentile of the distribution and therefore correspond to a to a VAR of 5%. So if you want to see it on a graph, here's what we're looking at. We're looking at this 5%. Let me clear all of this. We're looking at 1.66, so negative 1.66, so someplace here. And this someplace here, that's that encompass 95%, which is what's left is 5%. This is what we mean by this. So this is one point negative 1.644, which is 95%. Okay, so let's see how we can do this, how we could how we could perform this computation. But now since you saw it on a graph, so the formula to find the, the value at risk at 5%, we're going to expect we're going to take the expected return. And we're going to do plus minus be basically it's minus minus negative 1.64485 times the standard deviation. So we are away from the mean 1.64485 times the standard deviation. And this represent 95% of the occurrence. So what's left is the 5%. Okay. We could also use Excel sheet and I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you this uh, non-standard normal distribution function, which is norm inverse. And I'm going to show it to you in a, uh, in an Excel. Okay, so in a prior session, we looked at this scenario and we computed the expected return of this portfolio. We computed the expected return and we computed the we computed the uh, the standard deviation. If you're not sure how we come up with this, please see the please see the the prior recording. I will also put this in the description. This example, this way you can see it. So we already computed the expected return. We already computed the standard deviation. So let's compute. Uh, first of all, before we compute the value at risk, let's see what the value at risk tells us about this portfolio. The value at risk is right here. Look, they already they already kind of did this computation for us. And at 5%, they expect losses of negative 56.5. They already told us this. They already know based on estimate. This is an estimate. Based on the estimate, it's negative 0.65. Now, assuming this is a normal portfolio, uh, normally distributed portfolio, which is we assume that's the case, let's compute 
value at risk, which is we're going to take the we're going to take the expected return plus minus negative 1.64485 times the standard deviation. Let's take a look at these figures and start to do the computation. Okay, what is the expected return? The expected return is 0 0.3030. 74. The expected return was already computed 0.3074 from a prior ex from a prior session. Now we need to compute the, st the 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 second part of the formula, which is taking 1 point 1 1.64485 times the standard deviation. Given those two together, given those two together, we get a value at risk when we sum these up of 29.62 or basically 29.62 percent so based on a normally distributed portfolio given this expected return and a, and a five percent probability we can experience this as negative we can experience negative 29.62 well guess what that's based on the computation but based on our estimate it could be up to 56.5 what does that mean it means this portfolio this portfolio could have a worse prediction than what we are computing in a normal distribution. It means there is a tail risk. It means what does, let me just show you kind of what, what is a tail risk is. Again, this is assumed this is a normal portfolio. We think at 1.6, 1 1.644, we could have 29, negative 29.62% negative return. But based on our knowledge, we think this return is way, it's like way here. It's like, 50 56.5%. So what does that mean? It means this portfolio is quite risky. It's quite risky. Although we think it's 0.29 based on our computation, but what what they were what they told us from the get go at 5% we could have a losses of 56.65. So it tells us a little bit more. As I told you you could always compute this using Excel. So let's take a look at normal distribution using Excel. So if you want to use Excel, what you do is you put Norm, in, norm inverse, let me just do this for you. So what you do is you go to the function and let's look at the function. Let me just type it, it will come up, it's easier. Norm inverse. And what they ask you to do once you put the formula, the probability, we're looking at 5% probability. The mean, which is the expected return of this portfolio, uh, it's probability, let me show you, let's, we, probability C6, which is 0 0.05. The mean of the portfolio is G7, which is 30.74. And the standard deviation is 36.67. If we compute this, and again, voila, it's the same number, 29, you know, rounding, it's fine. 29.59 again this is based on our computation but when we created the scenario we think at five percent we could experience a loss of 56 percent risky portfolio because if that five percent happened our losses could be way more than 29 although we measure it at 29 but it's going to be way more than 29 percent in the next session we'd look at a topic that's similar to value at risk which is called kurtosis and skewness as always, I'm going to ask you to like this recording. If you like it, share it, put it in playlist. And obviously, if you are this far listening, it means you liked it. It benefit you. It means it might benefit other people. As always, also, I'm going to remind you to visit my website, farhatlectures.com, to supplement and complement your accounting and finance courses. Good luck and study hard.